Hi, welcome to Northwest Air Guns. I'm John, and today we're finishing up the uh, Benjamin 3100, the rebuild. We're going to do the valve, and we're going to do the front end, and I hope this is helpful to, uh, to those of you who are rebuilding one of these, or even if you're rebuilding any of the other uh, Benjamin Pump Up or Sheridan, uh, this might be helpful to you. Now, people have accused me of talking slow and using a lot of words, so my videos are really long. So this time we're cutting it down, we're using subtitles, and I don't talk that much, so some of you I guess will be happy about that. So in order to fill some of the gaps uh, in the video, I used uh, some music, and, and I'm a little bit in a dispute, I guess, you might say, with uh, YouTube. It used to have a library of free music that you could use and put it on, and it wasn't very good music, but it, it was free, and you could you know, kind of fill in spots in your videos. Um, and Final Cut Pro, which I used to edit, used to have a library too, and I, it's gone. I don't know what happened to that. But uh, So anyway, in order to not get in trouble with YouTube and using um, music that's licensed to somebody else, uh, I went ahead and dug out some old family tapes and, and put those in. So don't be too hard on me. That is my family. I love them. And I'm in some of them. So um, anyway, I hope it's not too uh, too much of a distraction from the video. But uh, anyway, let's get started on this 3100. <laughs> Most of the guts out of here, but we still have the valve uh, to get out, all the valving parts. And what you should see at this point is if you were to come in with uh, a test long uh, light here, bore scope, you should see something that looks like, if I can get it, looks like that. There's our uh, valve stem that's what the hammer hits that kind of shiny thing in the middle and then there's a brass nut you can see it kind of has a square looking um, center there and that's what we're going to use our valve tool you can see it's got a square shape to it fits into that nut and we can unscrew it so let's go ahead and get that going we'll uh, this is to center it, uh, mainly for when you're putting it back, but also for when you're taking it apart. And some guys just wrap tape, um, you know, duct tape or some sort of tape so that it just barely fits into the tube. What you don't want to do is have it cockeyed while you're taking it out or putting it in. So we, there we got it. You can feel that we're in. Put our screwdriver in place. There, broke free. Now we can get that out. Okay, there's the brass nut that holds all the valving in place. <laughs> All 
right, here's all our valve parts and they come out uh, basically in this order. Uh, this is the exhaust valve itself. Um, and then a lead seal. Now there should be two seals in here and only one came out. This is the one that was sitting here and that's, that sits under the nut. So what that means, if there's no seal on the bottom of this, the other end of it, that it's still in the gun here. And we did, uh, we did a video all linked to about how to get that out. Um, I think it's a good idea to get it out. Some people just leave it in, but it affects the spacing. So when you're putting everything back together, it's a little harder to do. Uh, so I'd suggest getting it out. Now, we've got all this done. We're ready to uh, clean everything up and uh, replace a few parts and put it back together. Okay, we've cleaned everything up and polished it up. We're ready to put the uh, valve parts back and you should have polished if you're doing this the uh, valve itself and there's three faces there's going to be a seal here on this side with the threads and then the nut goes over that and there's going to be a seal on this outer lip on the bottom and so that's got to be polished and then around this hole here where the exhaust valve stem goes that needs to be polished so this needs to be cleaned up, shiny, no nicks, no gouges, anything like that. And then on the inside of the tube, I'm just terrible at this, okay, you can see the threads and that first seat is where the exhaust valve is going to sit and it should be shiny, it should have no gouges, uh, you know, be pretty smooth. And then going further in, this next lip is the uh, where the washer sits between the uh, intake spring and the exhaust spring. And then you've got your uh, check valve seat down here. And that looks pretty good too. Okay, uh, that's what it should look like. Now we can put this thing back together. First thing I like to do when I'm putting these guns back together is to get the uh, pump cup on the pump arm or the lever and uh, get it all back in the gun and set the, uh, the depth on it. Get rid of as much head space as we can. So that's what our next project is here. Get the pump cup on there. And then uh, if you recall, when we pulled it apart, it was seven and a quarter inches from there to there. So we're going to see where we're at. We're going to add just a little tiny bit and see if it closes. So that actually is seven and a quarter plus right there. So Okay, we want to make sure it all fits together well and rather than put the end plug in and pound in these things, you know, if you do that too often it starts to uh, uh, enlarge these holes just very slightly and then your pins can start to spin and then they, everything wears out and it'll wear out the holes here in the end of the tube. So I test it just using a, a pin punch and it's pretty close. If it doesn't close with the pin punch, then we'll back it off just a little bit. So let's uh, go ahead and get this going.
feels pretty good. We could um, maybe make it a little bit longer and see if it closes. So I'm going to iterate this a few times and see where we can get the maximum or minimum headspace in it. I'll lengthen it out, try it, and we'll do that until we get it just right. Well, here we are. This is, uh, you know, bottoming out here, the pump cup against the front of the compression tube. And this is only with about, um, oh, I guess about a sixteenth of an inch adjustment in the length of that rod. So we're going to back it off um, a little bit and that should make everything uh, just about right in terms of the headspace here. At this point, we're getting ready to put our kit back in. I think it's a good idea to take your nut and make sure it threads before you put anything else in. And this is just, uh, oops, this is just a spacer so it centers on the uh, tube so you're not threading it in, you know, crooked. And on mine, the bevel end goes forward. If for some reason you absolutely can't get it uh, to uh, thread in, try flipping that nut around. But you notice here on mine, I think you can see, I put a mark on it. And you go backwards till you hear it click. I don't know if you heard that. Okay, so it clicked, and you can see the mark is right there. So if, well, so it threads in easy, right? But if you're threading it in and your mark is out here somewhere, or your tape, or you just get a Sharpie and put a mark on your tool, you know you're not far enough in. So do this before you start anything, and that way you can be sure that when you start to thread this in it'll be in the right you know the right location and I think you'll save yourself quite a bit of heartache if you do that all right for this particular rebuild we're using a kind of the a traditional check valve uh, I'm out of the uh, the Mac one uh, synthetic ones so we're going to use this um, check valve spring, the washer that goes on top of it. I put a new uh, exhaust valve spring in because the old one was kind of funky. You know, they get all green and, and they're rusty looking. And we got a new uh, in, or exhaust valve stem. This is one of the Mac one seals that goes on the bottom of the exhaust valve. Then another one goes on the top and then our nut. So let's put it together. The first thing we do is we're going to drop our check valve or intake valve down in and you should see brass. If you don't see brass then it's upside down. We got brass. Put in our spring. Sometimes they get cattywanker on you. There it goes. The washer washers in. Now we can put all this stuff in. In this particular case, it doesn't always happen this way, but the spring fits on the end of that. Now this, like I say, it doesn't happen very often, but occasionally it does. So we'll put our seal here on this end. I can get it on there. There we go. Now that's on there like that. The uh, seal that goes on the top here and our nut. Fit the nut on the uh, tool. And all of that goes inside.
could at this point, since we know it pumps and uh, we can pop the valve open here, we could just go out and shoot it. But I think um, it's a good practice to let it sit with eight pumps in it overnight and see if it's got air in it tomorrow because otherwise we're going to have to uh, pull it all apart and redo it and we don't want to have all the hammer and the hammer spring and end plug and trigger and all that on there. Don't want to have to redo that. So we'll put it in the vise. We're going to open it up like that and the uh, if it is leaking, we'll find out tomorrow because it won't have air in it. If it's leaking out the check valve, this pump arm is going to get pushed up. So we'll know that the check valve is a problem. If the pump arm is, you know, stays like this, then that means if it's empty that it's coming out the exhaust valve and we have to deal with that. So we're going to set it out here and let it just sit. You can put it in the corner, uh, wherever you want to put it. And wait till tomorrow and we'll see where we're at with it. Well here we are the morning after. Uh, it's been sitting overnight. This pump arm looks good so it doesn't look like we're leaking out the uh, check valves end of it. Let's see if we can get any air out of this if it held overnight or not. And it did. So this is now good to put back together. Mm -hmm.